Thank you for joining me. I'm Juan Lee, trader and founder of Prosperity Trade. This is a little bit different type of video. I want to take the short approach. If I was a major short trader, what would my short thesis be for Sensionix, a stock that I'm extremely bullish on? You're going to want to watch this video. Sensionix is a stock that I've been holding for quite a while. It got a lot of hype and used to trade under a dollar here. You see it was 50 cents in December of 20, spiked up with all the hype and all the meme stuff at 5.58. Now at this area, you see here it kind of bounced to dollar 82, then went all the way back to four or something. I believe that's because it was highly shorted. If you look at the short flow interest, it was extremely, extremely high. And it was one of the most shorted companies, one of the top 10 shorted companies in the market. I believe that it's possible that the short sellers were closing their positions and this caused another little spike, but it's still at this point here today, it's still shorted every month. The short interest has been dropping. So there's less and less people shorting the stock, but it's still above 20%, which is extremely high. So I wanted to approach this company and approach this stock. If I was a short bias type trader, what would my thesis be for this stock? Why would I want to short it? I'm going to do a DCF, an honest DCF, according to its revenue. And we're going to see what kind of intrinsic value we get for this company and why I would short it. Okay, so just a little thing, a little bit about Sensionix. They're in Europe, the Middle East, US, Africa. Right now, the majority of their revenue is in uh, Europe and they do have their 90 day uh, CGM, continuous glucose monitoring. It's basically monitors your glucose and you can see the results on your phone and you can see when your sugar is up or down. So the first thing that I would want to point out for my short thesis would be the fact that they have to go up against Abbott and they have to go against Dexacom and Medtronix. These are big heavy hitters with big money. If you Google CGM, Abbott and all these companies, you're going to see that their commercials are going to pop up. You see on TV, they have a large market share of the CGM market. The market opportunity for this, according to 2019, it's estimated 463 million people worldwide have diabetes, and it's going to continue to grow up to 700 million by 2045. So here's some of the risk factors that are laid out for our thesis statement. They have significant operating losses since inception, cannot assure that they will ever achieve or sustain profitability. That's a major concern when you're investing in a new company. Okay, they keep, they haven't been profitable and they keep having to dilute shares. You know, they, this is, this is always a, a major concern. So this is point number one, the short thesis or point number two, the point number one would be that there's major competition companies that are already well established in the CGM uh, market. Their collaboration and agreement with Ascensia to make ever since may not be successful, which is true. So they've partnered up with Ascensia and Ascensia is basically going to take care of the marketing for them. But it doesn't guarantee that that collaboration will result in success. They have limited commercialization experience in the U.S. and Europe. So they're dependent on Ascensia. Ascensia does have some experience in Europe, but not as much in the U.S. market. So we have to see how that goes. I mean, if they're just going to go on Facebook and try to do social media ads on Facebook. So we don't know what their exact strategy is for how they're going to market it, but that's a major concern. That's a major risk factor. They are dependent on one product, the Eversense. Their success depends on their ability to continue to develop, commercialize, and gain market acceptance of their products. That's the biggest risk, right? If this device that ever since they're not successful with their 180 day device, then this stock is just going to crash. I mean, it's, it's absolutely going to crash as opposed to like Abbott, they have a lot of other things going on. If their CGM device, if they don't st sell their CGM device, they have a lot of other sources of revenue, a lot of other things that they s sell competitive industry and larger players. That's we, who we alluded to with Abbott, Medtronic, and Dexacom. Their ability to maintain and grow the revenue will depend on establishing customer base and retaining a high percentage of their customer base. 
we have to see okay right now with dexacom you can get your device mailed to you at home even though you have to switch it out every two weeks but they mail it this one even though you only have to go once every 90 days and then hopefully the once every 180 days you still have to go to the doctor they have to insert the device people may not want to do that maybe people are already comfortable and they're used to dexacom and they're used to abbott and they don't want to switch they don't see the benefit of it risks associated with outsourcing and the manufacturing of their products could reduce their gross margin and negatively affect their operating results right that's another major concern they have to outsource their product and we're going to see how much of their revenue so we're going to have to see once they start ramping up right now they're not profitable and you see if you look at their operating income statement a lot of their revenue they don't keep a lot of their revenue their net income is, is not positive so that's that's another issue as they scale up are they going to be able to keep costs down and keep themselves profitable these are all major things that they haven't proven themselves yet if you're if you have a short thesis they haven't proven themselves yet these are major concerns so these are their products and i have plenty of other videos i have about five other videos on sensionics that you can see the their products their ownership there is some smart money it's not a whole lot but there are some investors uh you know blackrock vanguard state that where you'll you'll find that they've loaded up on sensionics stocks insider transaction this this may be a concern right since 3 9 2020 all the way till today pretty much every couple months they're selling shares they're selling shares they're selling shares and they've diluted a lot of their shares sometimes with these new companies they do have to dilute shares to raise capital but you know i mean the, this company has gone way above a comfortable level of selling shares that you may want to uh, see so if we look at their earnings blue lines is the consensus estimate and the orange is the reported so it's been off and, on, off and on, like here they missed, here they they went way above what the consensus was. And this quarter they missed consensus estimates, which caused the stock to drop a little bit. And they blamed it on the Delta variant and um, some seasonality issues. Okay, so this is where, where we would take basically all their numbers and estimate what their intrinsic value we have the downside the base and the upside so right now you know their revenue has grown six percent then down 78 percent so these are what we estimate their revenue growth is going to continue to be so on the downside we're saying 0 0.005 percent and on the base 0 0.024 and on the upside 0 0.044 assuming that they continue on the path that they are for the next few years these numbers will stay the same now the upside here we can be extremely bullish if we believe that their 180 is going to take a large market share of the cgm community okay so looking at this dcf we have here their last how much market share they currently have of the CGM market. And we have here 0 0.001, 0 0.114, 0 0.039, 0 0.041, 0 0.009. 0 .009. So it, it dropped here significantly. In each of the cases, we'll say here that for the base, they're going to increase uh, 0 0.024. For the upside, 0.03 percent they're going to increase and we see here how much percentage of revenue uh, or market share they're going to obtain for each case so for the base model we're saying that they're going to have 0 0.024 0 0.051 kind of going along with these current numbers but increasing every year this is what analysts look at they look at okay what ha what percentage of market share have they been receiving right now 0.1%, 0.160%. This is going all the way out to uh, 2031. By 2031, we believe they'll have 0.725% for your base thesis. And we factor in everything else, the cost of sales. We can change these numbers too, but they're pretty high now. So, you know, if you're upside in the future, you believe that they're going to get it down to 65%. Hopefully by, you know, 2024, 2023, 
they will have learned how to or figure out a way to scale up and also keep these below 100% like what they currently have. And, you know, so this is a part of the future estimate. And then there are R&D expenses, you know, how much of that they're going to keep down. And we basically put their balance sheet and cash flow statement, get all those numbers factored in. Their CapEx, this is also estimates uh, for downside. We're saying it's going to be high at 3%. For upside, if we believe we're bullish, 2.6%. And these are all rational numbers and, you know, uh, uh, numbers that are consistent with what they've been doing. Basically, with the base model, based off of their sales, based off of what they're going to be growing over the next year, the pace that they are, based on how expensive it is for them to keep that revenue, we believe that this company, they or, or your thesis statement, if you're shorting, you believe that this is a 16 cent company. Now, if you're bullish on it and we put in those upside numbers that we, we showed before, it's still low, 284. So this is why it's still an over 21% uh, bullish uh, or, or short, the, short uh, interest on this, you know, because even, you know, at the upside, even if you're bullish and they do better than expected, you know, it's 284. I for me like if i wanted you know if since i'm bullish you know just to give the opposite i do believe that as the years go down up and they establish their 180 let's say i think you know they would get a little bit more market share than just three percent and let's say 0 0.08 percent and then maybe by 2024 they'll have their um 365 so they'll get you know a little bit more percentage of upside and let's see you know just kind of those small increases so i've increased some of the percentage this is my bullish case if they're successful with their 180 and if they get a larger percentage if they pretty much kind of like quadruple growth what they're doing now and they don't have a lot of sales right now i have an intrinsic value of 899 with that that's the potential upside but we showed the other, the base case would be 16 cents. The bullish short thesis base case, it'll be $2.89. And that's why it's so highly shorted because they do these research and they buy millions of short sales at the five, at the four. They see how undervalued it is. And, um, you know, that's, that's kind of like how people come up with their short thesis. So that was my video. Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Please subscribe, comment, and like, and see you on the next video.